भी बैक टू बेसिक डिड यू नो द बेसिक रिसर्च इज योर टिकट टू एडवांस फॉर न्यू रिसर्च एरियाज वेयर आर साइंटिस्ट आर्टिस्ट एंड एक्सपर्ट्स विल एक्सप्लेन कांसेप्ट्स इन बेसिक साइंस बियर इन माइंड that basic research does not have to be basic in the simplest sense of the word it is something that we want you all to redefine to make it more attuned and relevant to the needs of our time after getting full dose of the covid vaccine but because the vaccine requires about 2 weeks to become effective after the second dose for a two dose regimen uh, of a vaccine a person is not considered fully vaccinated until 2 weeks um a person who tests positive for covid between the first and the second dose for a two dose vaccine or a person who tests positive before the two week period after um the the first dose of a one dose vaccine is not considered a breakthrough case the the covid-19 vaccines currently available have proven remarkably safe and highly effective thus far but since no vaccine is perfect and no vaccine offers 100% protection against infection we expect to see occasional infections after full full vaccinated full vaccination but these infections are are mild and they do not threaten our goal of reaching population immunity Thank you Dr. Sanikas. As a vaccinologist, you will be familiar with the high vaccine hesitancy rates in the Philippines. Can you further elaborate what is vaccine hesitancy and what are the methods how we can counter vaccine hesitancy? The vaccine hesitancy is the delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccines despite availability of the doses. Now it's a uh, important to highlight this because we always hear about vaccine hesitancy in the context of covid but in reality in many places globally including the philippines there are no vaccines available for everyone who wants to get vaccinated so this must be taken into consideration but at its core vaccine hesitancy results from decision making process and uh, reflects a variety of factors there are three c's we call it we call them the three c's of vaccine hesitancy uh, confidence complacency and convenience Vaccine confidence is the trust that patients, uh, their families, and the healthcare professionals have in vaccines, and the process that led to vaccine development, licensure, manufacturing, and recommendations for use. Vaccine complacency exists when the perceived risks of the disease is low, and vaccination is not thought of as a necessary prevention for um, for COVID. convenience is related to the availability affordability and accessibility of vaccines so these three c's confidence complacency and convenience need to be addressed to increase trust in vaccines and eventually improve vaccine uptake all of these three c's are susceptible to misinformation and false information affects our decision making to get the vaccine or not so to address misinformation we need accurate timely consistent and empathic messages coming from the authorities and the government needs to help uh community leaders and engage them to get the message across the broader community so once we are able to counter vaccine hesitancy and a majority of the population agrees to receive the vaccine is there a specific percentage of the population which needs to be vaccinated to reach herd immunity and what other factors do we need to consider herd immunity also known as population immunity is the indirect protection from an infectious disease that happens when a population is immune either through vaccination or immune through um, natural infection to safely achieve herd immunity against covid a substantial portion of a population would need to be um vaccinated to lower the overall amount of virus circulating in the community and the percentage of people who need to be immune in order to achieve this herd immunity varies with um each disease for example herd immunity against measles requires around 95% of a population to be vaccinated um and this is related to the r not which is the number of people that 
one infected person will pass on a virus to on an average. Um, measles has an R naught of 15. Uh, in populations without immunity, that means on average, one person will spread measles to 15 other people. So to achieve herd immunity, we need to make sure that at least a portion of this um, of the population with the formula is one minus R over R naught. So for COVID, the R naught is around two to three. For an R naught of three, the higher of the the higher end of the estimate of for COVID, this means that we need to get at least sixty seven percent of the population immune. Recently, we have seen the emergence of the Delta variant, which is much more transmissible. How will this Delta variant or other existing or future variants affect our ability to reach herd immunity? Herd immunity should really be thought of as a, a gradient, um, a range of immunity at which we expect to see declines in transmission, but not where transmission risk ends completely and immediately after reaching uh, a certain point. How and when we reach herd immunity will depend on several factors. Um, the increasing transmissibility coming from more infectious variants like the Delta variant, um, current vaccination coverage levels, expected vaccination coverage levels based on hesitancy, natural immunity from past infections, and of course, control measures and um, behavior, the behavior of people in the community. So if the R0 increases, then the amount of people you need vaccinated to get herd immunity also goes up. Um, so the more transmissible variants increase the numbers we need to reach. Some experts are now estimating that the threshold for herd immunity um, with the Delta variant is around 80 or even 85 percent. But it's important to note that R0 is not a biological constant for a pathogen. It is affected by numerous biological, social, behavioral, and environmental factors that influence the pathogen's transmission. Thank you, Dr. Sanikas. Your answers have been very informative and enlightening. Again, we thank you for being our guest speaker here today. This ends our experts class today. We thank you for watching and we hope for your continued participation in other NRCP lectures. Good day and stay safe, everyone. Also with us, Dr. Josefina Tuazon, an NRCP Associate Member of the Medical Sciences Division and a retired professor from the College of Nursing at the University of the Philippines, Manila. Dr. Tuazon is also a public health expert and she will give her reaction on the video. Good morning, everyone. Let me first uh, congratulate NRCP for this very relevant and important topic today. And thank my reaction, I'm just simply impressed with NRCP and the expert class and the information that was given by our speakers. The situation is a bit different today compared to the early months of 2020. Introducing Health Insight Wellness. Healthy blend 15-in-1 and 16-in-1 coffee blend.